Hi, my name is Doug. This is Frag Farm. We're a professional coral farm and ICP consultancy based in the UK. These are systems 3 and 4. They're a total of 5 metres long and combined at 1.5 metres wide. It's a fairly substantial area. It's covered by 12 reef-led 50s, 15 reef-led 90s and 5 reef-led 160s. And we grow really everything under these. Um, we have the reef-led 50s for LPS, the reef-led 90s and the 160s uh, we're growing the SPS very very well under those. We've been wanting to create this video for some time. We're asked all the time which lights do we use in the farm and there's often some surprise when we say Red Sea. In this video I'll explain our rationale and thinking behind why these lights are probably the superior coral growing light on the market at the moment. So getting into our first criterion, the spread. It's notoriously difficult to light coral trays that are wide and shallow and so spread has been a problem um, really from the beginning. We started off with hydras and T5s so um, when we first saw the Red Seas and tested them we were so impressed. We have an MQ510 PAR meter and we tested the PAR over the, uh, the area that the, the lights are supposed to cover for the Red Sea 90, for the RL90, uh, that's a two foot square, 60 centimeters square area. And we were surprised to see how uniform that light spread was. Um, as in fact, it was only a 15% difference around the edges compared to the middle. So there's no hot spots. Um, it's very, very equally uh, distributed. This was uh, a great surprise to us um, and it just showed how um, yeah, well thought out these lights are, how well designed they are. Um, with that uh, glass um, semicircle lens that uh, sits around the dense matrix um, board of LEDs, it really gives a very very equal distribution of light. The second priority for us was shimmer. Now that sounds like very much an aesthetic um, thing to have with, with lighting. Um, shimmer, it looks wonderful um, if you can have you know lots of shimmer. It's really only available uh, from dense matrix lights like the Red Sea or, or Kessel. Um, but you get with these lights a very a very lovely shimmer if you've got a lot of surface movement. And I think it actually goes beyond just an aesthetic. It's, it's not just the look. Um, but if you look at, uh, you know, the if you actually go to the reefs and look at, um, let's say, in a lagoon, the, uh, the ripple of the waves causes quite a strong uh, shimmer in the water. And so that's happening in the sea. And um, I believe it's actually quite important because that shimmer is concentrating the light um, just for a split second. And then it eases off. Because our coral trays are 75 centimetres front to back, that is actually beyond the, um, the scope of the Reef Lead 90 or the Reef Lead 50. 
So you will note that uh, we've doubled up on the lights and again there's a good reason um, for that. In a farming environment uh, you rely upon lots of different light sources, you know, lots of point sources to hit the uh, to hit the coral. The more light that hits on all sides the better the coral is going to grow and colour. So one of the problems with LEDs of course is um, it, they're like laser beams and you know to be able to um, maximize the amount of light the coral is getting is actually much harder in a coral tray when you've only got a 30 centimeter deep um, tank um, the light doesn't bounce internally off the sides of the glass as it would on a deeper display tank and so you need more lights uh, to have effective coverage um, over the over the area so we've actually over specified the number of lights that we need but we're getting tremendous performance um, with this doubling up um, of the lights the third priority for us was spectrum and how that spectrum is delivered from a power perspective so the Red Sea is really the first blue LED um, mainstream blue LED that, uh, that, that came out and we were impressed by the fact that the Reflet 90 which was the first one that we saw was a 90 watt fixture actually that's technically incorrect it's a 93 watt fixture because there's 3 watts of moonlight um, but out of a 90 watt fixture 80 watts of that power was blue and it's uh, very much focused around the 440 nanometer uh, range of the spectrum. So this is um, a wavelength which really tickles corals. It's, it's, uh, it excites the coral. Um, it's really giving them pure energy uh, to grow. And um, you know, so that really was what we were looking for, is the very strong peak in 440. We were less concerned about um, some of the other nanometer range in the sort of um, the violets and the, the, the um, maybe into the cyan and, and green, uh, and certainly not that interested in red or green. Um, the 10 watts of white, which is in the Reflet 90, um, is really well balanced actually. It's an 8000 Kelvin, I believe, 8000 degrees Kelvin of, of white. And it balances quite well. So you can set the lights up to um, you know, 12,000, 15,000 or 20,000 degrees Kelvin. If you run it without white, I think it's probably getting closer to 23 or 20, even 25,000 uh, degrees um, of Kelvin. So it's uh, it's a pretty blue light, um, but it has the option of becoming more of a full spectrum light. Um, this poses problems for you know challenges for uh, taking photos. Uh, certainly with your mobile phone it's not going to like um, you know taking photos under the Red Seas so you need an orange filter um, uh, that's really essential for taking any any photos under these blue lights but that spectrum was really very important to us and how that uh, that that um, blue and white light is delivered uh, and the proportion of how that how they work
a very strong peak um, in photosynthesis, which drives the pH well for us. Uh, and these lights are monsters for driving pH. Um, so, you know, don't uh, believe all these, um, you know, potions out there for driving, you know, your pH up. It's actually your corals and your lights that should be driving the pH. So, you know, these, these lights, we, we uh, um, managed to get very, very good pH uh, from the corals because there's a lot of power um, of the right spectrum going to the corals so they're able to photosynthesize correctly. Of course, you need to have the right chemistry as well, but um, these lights uh, do perform very well on that front. So, the, the, the Reef Beat app... Um, you know, you, you can't really go wrong in setting the uh, the, the lights up, um, but there's other features within the app that um, are fantastic. So we could set up, for example, uh, cloud coverage, and we can see clouds, um, emulated clouds, going right the way across all of these lights if we wanted to. Um, we don't use that in the farm so much, but uh, there is another feature in ReefBeat which has saved our skin um, several times, which is when uh, the Wi-Fi goes down, which typically will go down with, if the power goes out, um, you'll get an alert. So it will tell you that the uh, device is no longer communicating with the cloud. That is a really, really valuable feature. Um, and like I say, we've had situations where um, a circuit is tripped, um, or we've had some problem in the winter with some condensation getting to the electrics, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we receive a, a notification at two in the morning to say, you know, these lights are no longer connected. You may want to go and check them. Uh, and we do, and lo and behold, you know, an entire system is, uh, is tripped and uh, at least we get a chance to correct it. Prior to having these lights, we wouldn't have known. So we'd have turned up in the morning with a system that may have had no power over, you know, a winter's evening, for example. So um, the ReefBeat app has been uh, really excellent for us and uh, it is, you know, uh, a great piece of technology that goes with these lights. The last priority really to mention is the reliability and the build quality and um, you know we have had one or two small problems where fans have needed to be replaced that's perfectly normal I mean the uh, the fans that go into um, to cool the heat sink on these uh, it's in a farm environment it's pretty warm it can get to 32 degrees in the farm quite easily um, so uh, the fans are on quite a long time but uh, really they've gone for years without having uh, having to be replaced we're having to replace a few of them now which is not an issue. Um, it takes no more than five minutes to replace a fan and they're not expensive. Um, we've had, had had one or two issues with um, power supplies. Uh, Red Sea have been great and replaced those as and when needed. Um, you know, the power supplies um, can fail. Um, to be fair, I think that's the same with every other manufacturer of light out there. So we've had, uh, I think, four or five uh, that have blown over the years, which is a, a percentage of the number of lights we have is pretty, is pretty good, I would say. So reliability-wise, the electronics, bulletproof. The, the build quality, the heat sink, you know, they still look as good as, as, as new if you uh, clean them up with a little bit of RO water get the salt creep and things off they're absolutely as they were out of the box so in terms of um, reliability and, uh, and, and construction I can't fault them in summary 
I would strongly recommend these lights. I think they are um, really exceptionally good. Um, if you uh, are considering them, you know, don't hesitate. I think you'll be very pleased uh, with these lights. Um, you know, we've grown a lot of coral with them uh, to date, and, um, and they've performed really impeccably. So I would urge you to, uh, you know, to get in touch if you have any further questions. Um, you can reach us through our Frag Farm uh, Facebook page. Just do a, a search for Frag Farm Limited on, on Facebook, you'll soon find us. Uh, or info at fragfarm.co.uk. Um, we look forward to, uh, to answering any questions you might have. I hope you found this video useful. And we hope to do a few more videos like this uh, over the coming months.